Welcome to Electron Line. To give us another example of what a partial derivative is, let's see how the volume changes of a right circular cone. In this case, we can see that the volume depends on both the radius of the base and the height of the cone. So we're going to find how the volume will change, first by only changing the radius, and then by only changing the height. So we're going to take the partial derivative of the volume with respect to the radius, and now we're going to take the partial derivative with respect to the volume, or with respect to the height, I should say. Now here, what I've done is I've said, well, if the radius is two units and the height is five units, we can calculate the volume, and the volume ends up to being 20.94, whatever the units are. Now, if we let R change by 0.1 unit, then you can see how the volume then changes to 23.09, which means a change of 2.15. If we keep the radius the same, but we change the height by 0.1 unit, you can see that the new volume now will be 21.36, which means the change in the volume is 0.42. We're now going to find similar values by taking the partial derivative, so we can compare it to something we can understand. Let's take the partial derivative of the volume with respect to the radius. That's going to be equal to the partial with respect to the radius of the function one-third pi r square h. Notice that everything else will now be constant. Of course, one-third is a constant, pi is a constant, but also h will be considered constant because we're going to keep h constant, and only r will be the variable, which means when we take the partial derivative, that is equal to one-third pi times h, because that all remains constant, and then we multiply that times the derivative of r squared, which is going to be 2 times r, and that means that this can now be written as 2 thirds pi r h. This is now the partial derivative of the volume of this cone, of the right circular cone, with respect to r only. Now, if we then find out if we let r change about by 0.1 units, we can see how the volume now will change. Now what we're going to do is we're going to evaluate this derivative. We're going to find the delta v, delta r, at the location when r is equal to 2 and h is equal to 5. And that will then, in this case, be 2 thirds times pi times r, which is 2, and times h, which is 5. And let's see here, that would be uh, 10, that would be 20, divided by 3 times pi equals, well, it would be 20.94, 20.94. And if we now want to find out, so what this means is, that means if r changes by one unit, remember this was the partial derivative with respect to r, so we know that h will remain constant. So if r changes by one unit, we expect the volume to change by 20.94 units. Now, of course, that's not going to be a linear change. So what we're going to do is plug in the same change as we did before. We're going to let r change by 0.1 unit. That means if r changes by 0.1 units, so if I say the delta r is 0.1, then we take a tenth of this, then you know that the change in the volume will be equal to 2.09 units. We'll round it off to do decimal places. There we go. And now let's compare that to what we got here when we did the linear example. And you can see that we got 2.09 here and we got 2.15 there. This of course is a little bit more accurate because we have it at the exact point right there, the exact derivative. But you can see that's how it works. We kept h constant, we only let r change, therefore we took the partial derivative with respect to r, and we got a derivative right here. If we then evaluate that derivative for a change in r being equal to 0.1, then we take 0.1 of this value, and that will be the change in the volume as r changes by 0.1 and h is kept constant. Now let's take the partial derivative of that function with respect to h. So we're going to take the partial of the volume with respect to h, which is equal to the partial with respect to h of the equation, that would be one-third pi r square h. Now in this case, you can see, when we take the derivative of the volume with respect to h, notice in this case, the one-third pi r square remains constant, only h is the variable, so this is equal to one-third pi r squared, and the derivative of h is then one, and this is therefore the, deriv the partial derivative of the volume with respect to h. If we now want to evaluate that derivative, 
when r is equal to 2 and h is equal to 5, that would be equal to 1 third pi times 2 squared. And that would be equal to 4 times pi divided by 3, which is 4.19. This is equal to 4.19. Now notice, this will be the change in the volume when h changes by one unit. Now, what would be the change in the volume when h changes by 0.1 unit? Because that's what I did here. I allowed h to change by 0.1 unit. That means when the change in h is equal to 0.1, that means that the change in the volume would be 1 10 to this, which is 0.42, rounded off to two decimal places. And how does that compare to what I found over here when I calculated? Notice that it's exactly the same value. So the change in the volume can be found by taking the partial derivative with respect to h, or it can be found by taking the partial derivative with respect to r. In each case, we keep the other variable constant and we only let one of the variables change. That's what we mean by a partial derivative. It's simply taking the derivative with only one of the variables changing and all the other variables staying the same. And there's another example to illustrate how that works.